missing the missing risk premium by Eric oh, Falkenstein. Oh, I yeah, know. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's great. Yeah, absolutely. And and he was the one that brought this fallen angels premium to my attention. I've always thought that of all the reasons to invest in credit, that's the most interesting because there's a structural reason for it to exist. And this that organizational structure for big insurance companies and, and many large pension pensions, for example, is, is unlikely to change going forward. So so this premium is is likely to persist. So yeah, I've, yeah. I've always found that yeah. that's that's really interesting. Yeah. Um so we're talking about bonds. We talked about equities. You mentioned that bonds still play a role in portfolios because they um, offer ballast to equities during disinflationary or, or uh, lower growth shocks. And um, of course, there's another side of that coin, and that is the inflationary side. And for the first time, arguably in, in, in 30 or maybe even 40 years, we're seeing inflation uh, rear its ugly head at the moment. And so I think it is timely to focus some time on what is missing from many portfolios, which is assets that are not don't have positive betas to inflation shocks. Um, so I know you touch on on commodities in this book. Uh, maybe, first of all, more generally, what are some asset classes or instruments that investors uh, should contemplate to help to balance their portfolios against inflation risk. Um, and then maybe specifically, we could talk about the role of commodities and their investability. Sure. Yeah, I, th I think it is really important, you know, the, the, the point you made that investors really don't have much in their portfolio that benefits from rising inflation. And, you know, in 2010s, they could count their blessings. And, and, and anybody who had commodities, actually, like you can see it, like pension allocations to incipient commodity allocations were sort of taken down then during the decade because, because it didn't work. And again, so we may return to the, you know, investor patience is a, is a tough one. And so certainly like commodities, commodity allocations didn't survive the bad decade in most cases. So, um, so basically both stocks and bonds dislike higher inflation and and there are very few things commodities and it's a lots of different commodities depending on what kind of inflation that's why we tend to like broad commodities because we don't know what kind of inflation is gonna sort of hit us so commodities are i don't know best of a bad lot in some sense or so uh, break even inflation and some um, real assets, but I would be warning that I, I really like some Elroy Dimson language. Sometime he said that um, there's, there can be inflation protection from a premium for, 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 for example, equities or maybe for, from some private assets, but it, it doesn't mean that it's inflation hedging in the sense of correlation doing well when inflation is rising. There are very few things that do that. Again, commodities and break-even inflation is pretty much the only things that that uh, so break even or inflation swap so difference between uh, uh, nominal and uh, real bonds. Anyway, so so I think commodities are great for for this diversification um, aspect, inflation pro protection, inflation hedging aspect, which which is really rare. But in addition, um, so our research, I, I want to highlight this: that our research, our colleagues, not mine, um, has highlighted with more than hundred years of data that commodities actually uh, also offer a positive long-run reward, commodity futures portfolios. And I think like there's a lot of intuition out there that commodities tend to tend to sort of cheapen over time. But, but again, not just my colleague study, but some other studies that have looked at last 70 or 100, 140 years do find that there's a positive premium on, on such a commodity futures portfolio. And I do want to, I thought that when I talk with you, I want to highlight this because the way this long-run commodity premium was earned is, is very much in your wheelhouse. It came from diversification and rebalancing. Okay. So, in fact, I, I, I use in my book, I don't know whether you've seen it, but I use in my book the quote of yours that uh, uh, well-executed diversification is indi indistinguishable from magic. I loved it. And, and so, and I, I, I use it in the context of this uh, example of, um, which I've used in my books, it, originally Urban Harvey, how 
when you look at the commodity portfolio, the compound average return can be 3-4%, even though the single uh, constituent commodity there may be earning zero. And that's actually what, what 100 plus years of data tells. And it really comes from this geeky, and I'm really sorry for some audience that this is, we're talking of variance, drag, and geometric mean, but, but basically when you reduce, when you diversify, you reduce the portfolio variance from 30% to 18% or something, and that improves the compound return because, uh, because of something called variance drag in, in geometric means. And so, so, so that's how commodities get 3% more than intuition warrants. Uh, anyway, so I sort of love it because it's 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 uh, it's really a minority <laughs> intuition, but uh, but certainly works. Yeah, I mean, what's important, I think, also, and you you highlight this in the book, is the fact that there's such a diversity of commodities, and you want to hold all of them, and you want to rebalance, and it's this rebalancing among such diverse instruments that also have high ambient volatility that produces um, a substantial portion of this premium, which is tied into this sort of reducing variance drag. And um, yeah, yeah the, the, the premium produced from, from just this rebalancing effect on uncorrelated assets with high volatility is astonishingly large. And, um, and, and, and you, say, you said, right, because, you know, Equities are also high volatility, but they are correlated when you look at them in a portfolio. Don't get as much effect. And then with bonds, we tend to get correlation and and lower volatility. And again, it doesn't matter too much. So it's really commodities are the best example in asset classes. And then I'm sure we'll talk later about long short strategies where this may help as well.